Once you've finished drafting your petition, what happens next? Unless there's a reason to wait, we file your case within the next few business days. We post your case to the court via the internet, so you don't need to be present. This filing officially starts the case in court. Call the day after we file your case to get your case number and filing date from the staff. This is the information that you give to creditors if you receive calls. Tell them you filed for bankruptcy, give them your case number and filing date, and let them know that your attorney is Garrett and Coons Chartered. Tell them that your attorneys have told you not to talk to creditors and then close the conversation. Now you may get calls for a few days after we file. The automatic stay does go into effect as soon as we file that case, but creditors are typically notified by mail, and it may take a few business days for that information to get to the right desk in their organization. However, if you continue receiving calls or you get a call or letter from someone you do not recognize, please let us know. That means that there was a problem in notifying them, and this can be caused by any number of issues. They may need to be notified at a different address, they may have recently purchased the debt, or the notice could simply be sitting on someone's desk. It's important that we give them direct notice of your case so they know about the bankruptcy, they know about the automatic stay, they have a chance to participate in the case, and they are therefore bound by the discharge. We are happy to contact creditors on your behalf. It's important, though, that we have good contact information. Anyone talking to you should be able to provide a name, mailing address, direct extension, and fax number. This information is very useful because it gets us to the right person in their organization. 1-800 numbers, unfortunately, do not do us much good. As I've said before, the better information you can give us, the better we can help you. A few days after filing, you'll receive mail from the court, from the trustee, and from us. This mail will contain the date and time of your meeting of creditors when we meet with a trustee. The trustee also represents the interest of the unsecured creditors, the credit cards and medical providers whom you owe. You can think of this person as your traffic cop. At the trustees meeting, we make sure everyone understands what we're trying to accomplish in the bankruptcy. What are our plans for giving or keeping a house or car? Does the trustee have all the documents to verify your paperwork is truthful and complete? Do you have any non-exempt property that needs to be sold in order to pay the creditors? If we have done something the trustee doesn't like or doesn't understand, they may ask about it. We have a great deal of power and flexibility when we craft a bankruptcy case, but there are a number of other people who also have a say in how the case is going to go, and the trustee is one of them. Now this creditors meeting is going to be scheduled about 30 days after you file, and you'll get about 20 to 25 days advance notice, so you should have plenty of time to calendar it. You want to be there at least 15 minutes before the meeting to talk to your attorney. It's natural to be nervous. Don't worry. A typical creditor's meeting lasts maybe five or 10 minutes. You'll be treated professionally by the trustee and your attorney can handle any other problems. You'll also need to take a second credit counseling course. This is the financial management course or sometimes called the pre-discharge education course. You may recall that before you filed, you took a short credit counseling course, probably online. And this course was mainly focused on bankruptcy alternatives to address your debts. This next course is more extensive and deals with how to manage your budget after filing, how to rebuild your credit, and how to make bankruptcy work for you. You need to get this second course done as soon as you can. We recommend that you complete the course before your creditor's meeting. Not only is this course required to finish your case, it's an excellent resource for our clients. We do like our clients, but we don't necessarily want repeat business. We want you and your family to walk out of our office with a new lease on life, and we want you to be prosperous. And this course is going to help you do that. If you need guidance on where to take the course, you can look through the signing packet we gave you, look in the resources section of our website, or just call the office. You also need to file next year's tax return on time and fax a copy to your attorney. This is very important. Your case will not close and you will not be clear of your debt until the trustee receives your tax return for the year. If you delay, the court may deny or even revoke your discharge, a severe penalty. In addition, part of your tax refund belongs to the estate. It's not your money until the court releases it to you. For this reason, you can't spend any part of your refund until you get clearance from us. If you do, you open yourself up to a whole range of trouble from forcible conversion to another type of bankruptcy, to denial or revocation of your discharge, or even to felony convictions and jail time.
do everyone a favor and hand that money to us for safekeeping until we can determine what needs to happen. By now, you've drafted your case and you have already done all the heavy lifting. You've put in the time to draft a well-crafted, polished petition and just a few more tasks wait before you reach financial freedom. At this point, it may be a good idea to review our next video, How to Keep Your Case Healthy and Your Lawyer Happy. It's an overview of the common issues that can complicate your case and impede your fresh financial start. In the meantime, congratulations on the progress you've made so far, and we look forward to helping you the rest of the way.